If you will it, you can cure me. And Jesus stretched out his hand, touched him, and said, I will be cleansed. But go and show yourself to the priest, so that they will declare you clean. A quotation from the Gospel just taken from Mark. One of the questions that we hear today is, why I have to go to a man for confession? And that is the Protestant, as we say, approach. Why I have to go to a man for confession? I go direct to God. God knows me more than the priest knows me. I can lie to him. Why I have to go to the priest for confession? After all, he is human like me. My dear people, if you want to understand what the sacrament of penance is all about, you just reflect on those two readings the church put to us today in front of us. First and foremost, the teaching of the church is not coming from imagination of some cardinals or bishop put together. It comes from the Holy Scriptures. And whatever the church defined, the church defined because we find it here. How many times you talk to our brethren, the Protestants say, it is not in the scriptures, so we don't believe it. Like for example, the mystery of the Trinity. All the Protestant churches believe in it. Do we find it in scripture? There is not nowhere in scripture that is word Trinity. But because it is, as we say, a verbum, verbum, a verbum day, that the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, how they live together, the church gave them in the early days to the teaching of the fathers of the church the word Trinity. And so today we are going to reflect and so we see why not those people but we we do not use or frequent the sacrament of matters. <coughs> in the first reading today we saw the Leviticus Leviticus were one of the tribes, of the, one of the twelve tribes, who were designed to be praised. Not every tribe can have praise, but just this tribe. And so God said to Moses and Aaron, who belonged to the tribe of the Leviticus, what to do? Remember that many of the laws of the Jewish people are surrounded about hygiene. hygiene. And because of that, they really are very careful. That's why we have the kosher, that's why we have the, the, the washing of the hands, the washing of the utensils, and so on and so forth. Because they are really very careful of passing on diseases to others. And so Moses was told by God and Aaron, when you see somebody that have like a scar, something that is indicate that he has leprosy, the priest has to declare him unclean. And so he has to take his abode, get out of the camp, get out of his family, and go away. And he has to live by himself. Because otherwise, he will infect the whole community. At that time, leprosy was contagious. And many people used to die. I don't know if any of you have saw this disease, this horrible disease. Begin to lose part by part your body. Your nose, your ears, you begin to fall. Uh, all the body is horrible, <coughs> horrible disease. And because of that, they want not to spread it. So when they see it, as soon in the beginning, they separate these people from the community. And in order that you come back to the community, the priest has to declare you clean. That was the law of Moses. Today we see a leopard. Who number one, he's supposed to be far away from the people. He has the nerve to come closer. And he came to Jesus. He's unclean. And he said to him, if you wish, you can cure. So already he, he crossed, he went away from his regulations, 
He comes to the civilization and then Jesus touched him. And when he touched him, he said, I will not be killed. But for them, that they might know that the kingdom of God is at hand, go and show yourself to the priest and offer an offering for thanksgiving. I'm going now to go in the second reading and you see how St. Paul tried to remind us about this very important action that the church takes. Because our leprosy, dear people, is our sin. And sin separates us from God and from community. What is the first commandment? I see some eight graders here. Remember this because I asked it in the interview. The first commandment is love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. And the second is equal to it. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Simple as that. So love is on two angles. Love of God, love of name. In fact, if you look at the commandments, the first three speak about the love of God and ourselves, and the last seven speak about the love we have for one another. So if love of God is love God and love neighbor, when I hate, when I do evil, I go against God and against me. St. Paul put it very well when he said, we are one body. And if part of my body is ill, the whole body feels that sickness. We are as a church one body. And if one of us is sick, the whole body is going to suffer. And that's why it is very important, not only that we sin against God, but also that we sin against one another. That's why the church and I am very, very sad to our young generation, especially those who are under 30 years of age, that the catechism was not taught to them. We really bank up, bank up through in the faith. We really stole from you something very precious. Because we say that if you are under the pain of mortal sin, you are not allowed to receive communion. Do you remember those, those commandments? If I am under the pain of mortal sin, that means I broke one of the Ten Commandments and I am aware of it because I am the, the agent of it, I cannot go to communion. Today, they miss Mass following Sunday communion. They curse with and mention God's name, they go to communion. They promote abortion by killing, they go to communion. They are living in marriage and they, as we say, uh, they are unfaithful to their vows, they go to communion. Today they go to work and give six hours out of eight, they go to communion. Today people talk about people, where everyone do so, they go to communion. What kind of Catholic church are we? This is the identity of the church. And don't tell me, Father, you are old fashioned. Because the church was, the church is, and the church will be. There was no popes and no bishops who told us that this is not going, it's not any more effective. And that's why St. Paul today, in that short but very good point, he tells us what really we need to do. <coughs> St. Paul said, whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. 